Hi everyone, in this video we are going to talk about splicing process. Now we know in case of eukaryotic genes we have introns and exons. Now the exons are shorter whereas the introns are the intervening sequences between two exons and they are bigger in size. Now when eukaryotes transcribe their genes to mRNA then what happens in the mRNA as well there would be a sequence corresponding to intron and there would be sequence corresponding to exon and this kind of mRNA is actually known as heteronuclear RNA and it's not the processed version. After that this HNRNA would be processed and the intervening intron sequence would be removed and the exons would be joined and this process is known as splicing. Splicing means simply cutting out that means the process by which the introns are chopped off is known as splicing. But even if it sounds so easy, in real life this process is not at all easy. Why not? Let's try to understand. So whenever we talk about splicing, many things should come into our mind. That how are the introns and the exons are distinguished from each other? Are there sequence features? right that would discriminate between introns and exons second how are the introns removed third that how are the exons joined to each other after the introns are removed all of these questions should come into our mind when we think about this splicing process which is rather complicated so the mechanism by which introns are excised out is known as splicing and in this video we are going to focus on few things that what is the mechanism of splicing, where and when does splicing occur, what is the utility of splicing. So overall video have three tire structure. First we are going to talk about the splicing mechanism, the chemistry of it, then we would talk about where does splicing occur and at the end we would talk about the utility of the splicing. But this is a very brief and bird's eye view of this whole process. Later on we are going to talk about this mechanism in details. But before that guys, I want to tell you that please subscribe to my channel if you are a new visitor and don't forget to share it in social media. By the way, I am also present in Patreon so if you want to support me, please pay me in Patreon and be my Patreon. And my courses are also present in Unacademy, which is India's biggest learning platform. So if you want to join Unacademy, use my code AP10 to get 10% discount. Thank you guys. Now let's come back to the video. So here is a eukaryotic gene and let's look at the junctions of introns and the exons. It turns out the junctions of introns and exons have specific signature sequence which can be distinguished. Now these are known as 5' splice site and 3' splice site. And there is also another sequence feature which is inside the intron known as branch point. So these sequences are given like this particular. So for example 5' splice site has a conserved GU sequence whereas the 3' splice site has a AG sequence. Now this sequence helped the machinery to recognize it. But before that let's understand the chemistry of it. So let us assume this is the simplified diagram of the gene where blue are the exons and the intervening sequence are the introns and introns is, uh, is depicted very simply. Now first what will happen is a nucleophilic attack. Now let me tell you guys the process of splicing is nothing but two subsequent transesterification reactions. So there are two nucleophilic attack and that's all. But there are certain machineries which are supporting these chemical events. But let's understand the chemical chemistry first and then we go to the mechanism of that machinery. So first, from the branch point adenine, the 2' prime hydroxy group, the lone pair of 2' prime hydroxy group would hit the GU bond. So that is the first set of uh, transesterification reaction. So between guanine and uracil there would be phosphodiester bond which would be attacked by these lone pairs of 2 prime hydroxy group. As a result what would happen? As a result these uh, GU would be 
forming a lariat-like structure and exposing the OH group of the 5' splice site. Now this OH group can further work like a nu nucleophile and it would attack again the 3' branch site, the 3' uh, splice site. And after that, what would happen? The second transesterification reaction. As a result, the lariat would be removed and the exons would be rejoined. So this is the overall process, the chemistry of the splicing event. Now, let me tell you, this process is complicated. So the spliceosome machinery is composed of hundreds of protein. Among them, many of them are SNRNPs. The SNRNPs are actually RNA, so which are catalytic in nature, okay? And the spliceosome use ATP hydrolysis for its function. Now the key components of the spliceosome is ribonucleoproteins because ribonucleoproteins are the key factors in this whole splicing process. Now let me tell you that this whole recruitment of the SNRNPs happens in a sequential fashion. Now these SNRNPs and the spliceosome hold the overall exon and intron in position such that they don't once there is a esterification reaction, they don't move away. So that's the whole goal of this complicated machinery. So they hold it in position and let the transesterification reaction happen itself. Now first, U2 is recruited. After that, in the branch point, U1 is recruited. Then U2 associated factor and branch point binding protein associates near the 3' branch site. After that, branch point binding protein is dissociated. Further, a complex of U4, U6, and U5 joins. Then what happens? The first set of transesterification reaction takes place. That means the two prime hydroxy group hit the phosphodiester bond. Then what happens? The five prime branch, the five prime splice site has open hydroxy group, which can further hit the three prime splice site, right? And then Ultimately, what happens? The exons are rejoined and the lariats along with these SNRNPs are removed. Now, these SNRNPs help to hold these complex uh, exons and introns in a particular position such that they don't float away inside the cell, right? So, in this video, we learned how complicated SNRNP, uh, SNRNP help in the process of splicing, right? Now, the splicing process is far more complicated and there are different type of introns that are spliced out, namely group 1 intron, group 2 and group 3 intron. And each case is overall the mechanism is same, but there are some modifications and some differences. So about all of these type of splicing event, we are going to look at in the subsequent video. But let me tell you guys the necessity of splicing process. So let me let us assume that this is a gene and it has four exons denoted in four different colors. Now, in case of splicing, what happens is different combinations of exons might, might be spliced. For example, here, the red, yellow, and green might be splicing, might, might be spliced out and forming this characteristic mRNA. And that gives rise to a particular protein with a different defined functionality. Now, from the same blueprint, that means same DNA, if different exons are selected for splicing, for example, this blue one, the red and the yellow one, then a different combination of exons would give rise to a different type of mRNA and its product would be totally different and it has a new function. And this is how from one particular blueprint, you can have more than one type of functionality in terms of protein. So this is very important in terms of uh, physiology and we'll come to that in subsequent videos. But let me tell you guys, before even the process of transcription can stop, the splicing machinery started its work. So when the RNA polymerase is moving along the 5' to 3' direction and transcribing the mRNA, then the phosphorylated C-terminal domain is a site for binding capping enzymes and the alternative splicing en enzymes. And this process happens simultaneously while the transcription is going on. So imagine how complicated this process is and how much temporal 
control this process requires. So overall in this video we looked at the mechanism of splicing, where does splicing occur and the utility of alternative splicing. So I hope you un understand this concept and this was just an overview of this whole process. In subsequent videos we are going to talk about uh, all of these process in much more details. So stay tuned and keep watching. Thanks for showing love and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.